more people should focus on the poverty question because uh, most people are still poor in the world and they are the most affected. Uh, you know, it's way of some of us do the sinning while others are going to do the penance. <coughs> and, uh, so you can see right away there's an unjust structure in that kind of thing. So there's no question historically the developed world has contributed the most to this problem. Uh, and uh, again, it's not an intentional or condemning fact, it's just a fact you know, that this is uh, both in terms of total, absolute amount of carbon and other gases put into the atmosphere, as well as a per capita basis. We're going to experience by 2020 a 50% cut in rain fed crops. So places that are dependent on rain uh, for the uh, production mm -hmm. without irrigation, and this goes back to around 200 million people in Central and Sub-Saharan Africa. So this problem, uh, this is a done deal. So this one's coming. You don't have to, so to speak, you don't have to worry about this problem. This is not one just kind of conjecture about the sea level rise might be in 2100. This one is is on its way right now. So we, you can see we only have about 11 years um, uh, to, to start really addressing the possible conflicts that may arise. Uh, I've already mentioned the Himalayans, you know, the glacial melt and so forth. Latin America, again, they're going to have some increase in rainfall they could do, and they'll have melt of glaciers and so forth, small island states. Uh, the United States, based on the Lieberman-Warner uh, legislation in 2008, the average low-income household energy price rise would be about $750 to $950. And I'll come back to what we did last year relative to that. But it will have impacts on low-income people here in terms of uh, energy costs. And that will include uh, not just this utility bill, but transportation costs, you know. Uh, the National Religious Partnership for the Environment is the, uh, a very unique organization. I think it, uh, at least with my experience, it's been an incredible interfaith uh, and ecumenical endeavor in terms of the uh, uh, closeness of the four member groups and how we work together, the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops, the National Council of Churches, the Evangelical Environmental Network, and the Coalition on the Environment and Jewish Life, so it's interfaith. And it was formed in 93. Its origins lie a little bit before that in the visionary Paul Gorman, who was its founder and director. Uh, he um, uh, was in Assisi back in the late 80s, and he kind of had one of these aha moments right there in the chapel, uh, and uh, thought about this idea of trying to pull together the faith community, religious community, to try to focus on this emerging question of the environment. And it also was partially a response to a letter in 1990 from Many, many scientists, including Nobel laureates, kind of saying in so many words, folks, we've carried this as far as we can, and a lot of this now is going to have to be the kind of uh, creating of the moral will to move forward, and the science community is not uh, the folks to do this. And so, uh, with some other impetus, uh, these four groups launched in 1993 a formal arrangement. It's uh, very much in existence, and uh, it actually, because uh, I've been part of that work, we. Uh, track grants from foundations and then distribute that pretty much on somewhat of an even formula among the four groups to carry on their work on the environment. I, I they call it we walk together separately. We're all moving toward that same goal of religion, environment, engagement, but you know we're we're different communities or we'd be one big happy religious family, which we're not. So so there's the four groups and uh, we try to march together. The programs are not anything you wouldn't know about. I mean they all have education programs, they all engage in mobilization. Uh, they all have their own specific policy, uh, and then they do work on advocacy. We never call it lobbying, but we do advocacy. <laughs> Heavy, intensive education with members of Congress. <laughs> uh, close a bit with the uh, role of the faith community. Um, we decided in the spring of 2007, uh, the Catholic Conference pulled together the first meeting, and we pulled together what we call the Smarter People's Meeting. And we invited people from around the city who are pretty smart in a variety of policy things into the room with us and said, we think that the poor are going to really be hurt by this question. And what can we do to, to begin to deal with this? Well, shortly thereafter, we got an invite from Senator Boxer's committee to say we'd like the faith community to offer some testimony before the committee. And we developed a testimony for the first time we ever appeared jointly all four groups at the hearing and laid out this whole scenario of the poor, uh, this is our primary concern, and that anything we do with it in terms of policy, uh, we have to help both 
offset the impacts of climate problems on them, as well as we have to offset the problems of the policy itself. Because I've already indicated it's going to cost more for the low income people to use in this country, and you've got to have some adaptation. So, price relief at home, adaptation abroad. So, that has become our key theme and our mantra. And, you know, this is uh, the challenge before us, I think, uh, from the, our own Bishops' Conference, you know, which is called for the use of the virtue of prudence, you know, this, in, in the real thing of, of reason thinking about public policy and not the shrill stuff that continues to go on and gets, gets used on both sides. A constructive action, you know, to protect the, the, the Earth's atmosphere and then solidarity and justice uh, you know, as the kind of primary um, uh, move. And then, um, again, I think the bishops are looking at this as a test, a moral test and an opportunity for the nation the entire Catholic community. You know, can we step up to the plate on this issue? But to use science as a source of wisdom and not a weapon. Uh, and uh, as I said, the public debate should be approached with prudence and honesty. Uh, and then uh, we've got to bring this religious and moral perspective to the public forum. The role of the faith community, uh, as I said, the public debate should be approached with prudence and honesty. Uh, and then uh, we've got to bring this religious and moral perspective to the public forum.